today is all about the Mongar too. Check it out. Let's look at the foundation of the tent. This is the ground cloth here that the tent comes with. One of the things that's really nice about it is it attaches to the poles. So if you had a mind to, you could set up a ground cloth like this and then throw the waterproof top over it and skip the inside tent if you ever had a need for something like that. But what that really does for you is when the tent's completely set up, then you can pick it up and move it wherever you would like to go with it. If you set it up and you, you find there's a better place for it, then you don't have to fool with the ground cloth and moving that thing around. So let's set up the inside tent, take a look at it. This is the main tent body, as you can see here. And then it connects in just like the ground cloth does. Just one of those red hooks there and everything gets set up. But what is really interesting, makes it for a nice setup and a nice tear down is these clips. So you can see these clips here you just pull them in and twist them. And that sets everything up. So whenever you go to take it down, it's really easy. You just move it and it clips. It seems to just stay up really well. I've had it in some high winds. So after you get those clips set up, next thing you have is the end here for your door. And you've got one on each side. Once again, you get those little red hooks go around to the other side and that brings tension here to this setup one of the things I want you to notice is how much room you have between the tent body and the poles all the way around so what this is going to equate to and we'll look at it in a little bit uh, is how far the rain fly sits off of this tent which really ends up making for a nice a barrier between that and the mesh body so whenever it's raining and such whatever you move around inside the tent if you accidentally bump against the mesh it doesn't go to the rain fly and create a leak uh, in any manner so you've got a lot of extra room for that one of the things i've learned since i've set this up few times on these different trips is that whenever you set up the rain fly over it the first thing you should do is connect both sides here on the top and that makes everything easier if you put down the ends on each side of the pole and then try to do the top it's really taunt and it's difficult uh, to pull hard enough here to get them to latch on each side but if you do these first then that makes the whole setup much easier here's the tent completely set up you can see all the pullouts on it. And these pullouts really help with ventilation. Uh, you can see here how this blocks out, allows air in, and then you've got this pullout here down on the bottom, which pulls that tent really taut, allows air to come up off the ground and go up in there. And then your doors for the best view tied off and then here again on the back side is the same you got this nice little area here underneath for the vestibule gives you a good place to put your different gear and whatever you have so let's go over some of the details that I really like about the tent and then some of the things that I do not and right here since we're here you can see this extra slack that is in the tent floor. So that makes zipping and unzipping the tent a little bit more difficult than what it may otherwise be. See, so once you get around that corner, I typically have to put my foot down here so that I can get it to pull and unzip reasonably. Uh, so that's something that could use some work. And what's happening is this is pulled so tautly, which you can tell it's not way tight but it's pulled taut and it's pulling the top of the tent down 
So we had some high winds uh, over the weekend when I was camping and the wind, the way I had the tent set up, the wind was hitting straight on. And because of that, then that side was pushing in that way and causing this part of the tent to invert and pull down like that, which uh, it didn't do anything on the inside of the tent. Uh, it was raining as well. It didn't cause it to leak, but it is something to note. If you know you're gonna have wind and such, if you get the wind coming on this side of the tent, you can see here that's extremely stable. So if you was to set up your tent where your wind blew in this direction, then you'd have a lot more stability uh, with the tent overall. And since we're here, let me show you these little pieces here that are really nice. So that allows you to keep tension and do this one-handed and that unlocks it so you can slide it and change your tension. So what I noticed while I was in Daytona was that after this tent has been set up for a few days, uh, the cover begins to stretch just a little bit. So the ability to go around and tighten everything up easy and quickly is nice to do with the tent, which brings me to something that uh, is a pet peeve of mine on this one. I'll fix it, it's not a big deal, but you see these loops here and there's no way to adjust the tension for the vest of you. So whenever you set this up, if you have to uh, stake this out, you have to move the stake out a little bit farther or just tie you a slip knot and loop it into this section here. Not a big deal, but uh, it is something that I noticed that wasn't well thought out on this piece. The same goes for the pieces on this end, though I've never had these uh, get loose on me down here on the bottom uh, for the vents. And like most tents, it has this piece here where you can tension uh, the rain fly up really easily just by pulling the loop here, or you can loosen it, uh, whatever you need to do with that. So let's go inside the tent for a second. So here's inside the vest of you. You can see uh, right here how much room is inside uh, the vest of you, but also notice that tent. You see where it's tied off and how much room the mesh has before it touches the tent body. Uh, that's very important on this tent uh, for the simple reason that whenever you're inside of it and you push up against one of the mesh panels, when you roll over in the middle of the night, if it's raining, then uh, you don't end up touching the outside, this rain fly. So that's very important not to touch that because it could cause a leak. So in Florida, whenever I was camping out, I uh, had a little bit of rain and it was running down off of the rain fly and I rolled over and, and pressed up against the mesh. I was like, oh no, I'm gonna cause a leak. But I looked and I wasn't even close to getting uh, on the tent whatsoever. So that's a really nice piece about this tent. I also think overall for the value that you get with this tent is incredible. Not only do you get the tent body, the shell, but you also have the nice brown cloth that I showed you earlier. Uh, and then also in the top, you've got a loft that is up there that works out really nicely uh, as well. So as you can see overall, the tent is a really good tent, especially for the amount of money that you pay. And the fact that you get all the extras, you get the ground cloth, which works with the, the tent poles. You get the piece that's up top, the loft, so you can throw stuff up there. Uh, and keep it off the ground. There's plenty of room in here for one person. It's a two-man tent, but it's got plenty of room for one and then all of my gear that I want to keep inside the tent. Uh, honestly, if my wife and I was camping in this, there'd be enough room for both of us in there as well, and we'd just store all of our extra gear that we needed to out uh, yeah, in this area. But because we're on motorcycles and we have uh, luggage options, most of that stuff when we're camping like that stays inside the bike. So for everything on this, it's a really good deal. As I tear this down, what I want you to notice is the tent poles, and I'll show them to you uh, how short they are. I like the tent poles because they're short enough to go right into the saddlebag on my motorcycle 
uh, extremely easy. So I don't have to find another way to strap them down or put them on the bike in a different place. Uh, they're short tent poles once this all collapsed and that makes the whole uh, tent option for me good because I can take this and my sleeping bag, air mattresses, uh, and all all the accessories and get it in one saddlebag. Uh, my chair and my table, uh, I'll strap to the back of the bike, but the camping setup, it's easy to throw in the saddlebag, which keeps everything dry. If you notice earlier, I showed you how you can set up uh, the ground tarp with the tent poles and then just run with this top piece, which uh, is an option if for some reason that's something that you want to do. I don't ever set it up without putting in the mesh anyway, but that's just me. Okay, so let me show you this. This is the tent poles in here. They go right in there like so. This is everything that goes with the tent, including the ground cloth, all of that that goes in there tent stakes in there uh, in the back i should have showed you but in the back here here i'll just pull it out it's two air mattresses uh so they go in there as well i've got my shoes i've got a, a medical kit that's also in there and then what i do uh oftentimes I'll take my sleeping bag and then I just start shoving it in the dead space inside uh, the saddle bag. That way uh, everything fit, fits in one saddle bag and it's nice and tight. If your saddle bags leak, then yeah, this, could, this would not be a good way to go, but uh, these have been pretty good so far as far as not leaking goes. So uh, all of that goes in there. Of course, I got this cavity here that the rest of the sleeping bag fits into. And that's how it all fits inside the, uh, the saddle bag. So not a bad deal at all. Everything works out extremely well there. And then I got the top box and the other saddle bag for incidentals. And with this uh, grab handle and then this grab handle here need be I can lay like my my table or whatever here and I got these two places to latch on to it does not affect the passenger if I don't have a passenger then I suck up there on the back seat so this is Augie Outdoors till next time y'all click like and subscribe later